Now let's join your hosts for this evening's contest, Jeff Joins, Juju Phillips, and Tom Watson. Hello, everybody. The 1989 college football season begins tonight here at E.J. Whitmire Stadium on the campus of Western Carolina University as the Bears of Lenore Ryan are in search of another successful football season for 1989. John Perry and his crew are here trying to improve on an 8-3 and three record that they had on the field last year. And tonight, the Bears renew a rivalry against the Catamounts. It's been 10 years since they played. The last time they played was right here in this field, and a lot of things have changed since then. The Bears of 1989, that's the story that we'll have for you starting this evening. Let me welcome into the broadcast, Juju Phillips. And Juju, the Bears are looking forward to a good year. They are, Jeff. They're looking for the third straight winning season. First time that would have happened since way back in the late 60s on the Hanley Painter. And they have a lot of the weapons we saw on offense and defense last year for Lenore Ryan, especially on offense. Sack 8 Offensive Player of the Year quarterback Tommy Laurendine back, along with Randolph Bowers at tailback. He's rushed for over 1,200 yards the last couple of years. And they have some threats at wide receiver, namely Scotty Walker, who has only caught 10 passes in his career, but five of those have been for touchdowns. So you see some weapons on offense. They have some injuries there, too, on the uh, offensive line. And on defense, they want to improve as well. They've finished at the bottom of the sack eight defensive standings the last five years. They've had some injuries as well on the defense, but they have a number of starters back, especially on the defensive line and at linebacker. So, again, a lot of anticipation for the 1989 football season, Jeff. And there is excitement in the air for the 89 football season, but there's a lot of history that goes with this Lenore Ryan Western Carolina rivalry. It's been a long time since they played. Tom Watson's seen a lot of those games, and Tom, it's been since 1979, but we're looking forward to this, and the history of this rivalry has been great. Yes, the Western Carolina University was Western Carolina College, was in the old North State Conference and left in 1961. The Bears have a 24 and 12 edge as far as the series stands, and uh, Coach. Stram here at Western Carolina is hoping that uh, he can continue the winning ways. Western Carolina has won the last four games. Last meeting, like you mentioned, was in 1979. They have a quarterback situation here with uh, Todd Cottrell and Mark Smith. Todd Cottrell will probably get the nod for this uh, this evening's game. Uh, Cottrell being a brother to Mike Cottrell that plays basketball at North Ryan College. So the two schools have something of a connection family-wise as far as the Cottrell family goes. It's Lenore Ryan and Western Carolina for the first time in 10 years. And Juju, who knows what the future is going to hold, but the 89 season's about to kick off. It should, Jeff, and we should have a pretty good contest. These two schools, uh, with a new coach for Western Carolina, they have a lot of optimism. Lenore Ryan wants to keep to, uh, their winning ways going under John Perry in his sixth season. This should be a pretty good opener and a good test, especially for the Bears. And, Tom, as we get ready for the kickoff here in just a few minutes from now, there's one thing that can be pretty well expected tonight. A lot of people are expecting these teams to ring up some points on the scoreboard. Yeah. The Western Carolina, the worst defensive team in the Southern Conference, and Lenore Ryan, the worst defensive team in the SAC 8 over the 88 season. Well, the 89 season's about to begin, and we'll have the kickoff of tonight's Lenore Ryan Western Carolina game on Bob Waters Field here at E.J. Whitmire Stadium when our coverage of Lenore Ryan Football 89 continues. From the early 50s to these modern 80s, Killian's Hardware on Springs Road has been a landmark in the Catawba Valley. Before fall begins, save like never before on all lawn and garden equipment. Now get 0% interest, no money down, and no monthly payment till June 1990 on all Wheel Horse products, the most powerful breed of horse. Wheel Horse and Killian's, the best products at the best prices. Killian's Hardware will trade for anything that doesn't eat. If you can't find it, you're not shopping at Killian's Hardware, Springs Road, Hickory. Hurricanes, the most powerful and destructive force on Earth. In 1988 alone, they caused nearly $10 billion in damage. And the effects of hurricanes aren't limited to where they reach land, sometimes causing devastation days later and hundreds of miles from where they first hit. The Weather Channel Tropical Update keeps you informed once every hour with concise, accurate information on the development, movement, and potential impact of these storms. In the tropical storm and hurricane season, tune in each day for the Tropical Update at 10 before the hour, only on the Weather Channel. Come to Showtime, the home of the best exclusive blockbuster movies and specials you can't see on HBO. In September, Schwarzenegger, Belushi, Red Heat, The Boys, Meg Tilly, Carmilla. Comedy Club All-Stars 3, you won't see them on HBO in September. Showtime exclusives, here you see them, there you don't. This fall, Michael Jordan moves. Magic Johnson moves. 
Larry Bird moves. This fall, the NBA moves from TBS to a new cable channel, TNT. Every NBA star, every NBA team, twice each week, all season long. Go where the NBA moves, TNT. Western Carolina will receive the kickoff here at E.J. Whitmire Stadium as the 1989 football season is about to get underway for Lenore Ryan. Deep to receive the uh, kickoff for the Catamounts are Ricky Garden and Reggie Graves. And kicking off for Lenore Ryan is Jason Mundy as the Bears are just about ready to kick off this 1989 season. Monday, a freshman from Stone Mountain, Georgia, his first college football experience will be to kick it off here, Tom Watson, against Western Carolina. Well, he's picked a big game to uh, have this initial kickoff. Division 1, 2A opponents, Western Carolina. Well, we've been waiting since last November for this moment. And we're just about here. And the kickoff is a high kick going to go into the end zone and they're going to down it there and Western Carolina elects to take possession at the 20-yard line. That's a good sign for the Bears as we get a kick into the end zone to start the 1989 football season. Reggie Graves caught that in the end zone. He thought better about bringing it out. So Western Carolina takes over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. For the Catamounts, they're going to start Todd Cottrell, the quarterback, at that position. That's the brother of Lenore Ryan's uh, basketball player, uh, Mike Cottrell. Carlton Ter Terry and Johnny Parton are the running backs for the Catamounts. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. As Cottrell calling signals, first and 10, they have a man in motion. And they pitch it back to the tailback. That's Carlton Terry. The Bears cover it well and uh, no gain on the play. A swarming Lenore Ryan defense on the first play from scrimmage of the 1989 season and Western has no gain trying to run the ball. Jeff, one of the keys on defense for the Bears is going to try to keep Western out of that eye formation to run that toss sweep. And that time Ben Fox came up along with Terrence Mungro out of Newton Conover to support it. Also Marcus Wall in there as well. And a good start for Lenore Ryan up front. Three receivers for Western Carolina, but the official steps in, and Lenore Ryan has something uh, wrong. They take a timeout. Here in the opening seconds of the first quarter, we have a Lenore Ryan timeout. We'll run down the starters on defense for the Bears, starting at nose tackle with Scott Henry. Defensive tackles this evening, you will see number 56, Rich Jones, and number 59, Eric Boston, out of Taylorsville in Alexander Central High School. Defensive ends this evening is Todd Hagler, the senior, out of Monroe. Also, we mentioned Ben Fouts, the junior out of Roanoke, Virginia. At linebacker, Charlie Wallace, last year's leading tackler. At uh, the senior, 6'1", 215 out of Delmon, Pennsylvania. The other linebacker is Toby Bratton, the junior from Gastonia. An experienced secondary for the Bears, Ike Oglesby, number 25. Marcus Wall, number 7. Terrence Mungro, a senior out of Newton Conover, number 27. And Bobby Page, number 23, a sophomore out of Clemens, North Carolina. Wide receivers to each side of the formation for Western Carolina, Don Henderson and Andy Schultz, as Terry and Parl uh, Parton line up behind Cottrell, second and 10 at the 20 yard line for the Catabouts. They flip flop the tight end, and Cottrell on a very long count on second and 10. We'll give it to the tailback, Carlton, and the Baron defense doing the work up front. These two teams are just about uh, equal in weight and size on that offensive and defensive front, Tom, so nobody really has an advantage down there. Yeah, Lenore Ryan called that timeout on the first uh, offensive play. Western Carolina put a wide out in motion, and Ben Faust had to cross the defensive formation to cover it. And so I knew there was something amiss when they had to go that far across the field to cover on defense. Four wide receivers, only one setback for Cottrell this time as he goes third and seven from his own 23-yard line. First real passing situation of the night. He sends everybody out for a pass, throws it over the middle. Going to be caught making the reception is Andy Schultz. It'll be a first down for the Catamounts at about the 35-yard line. Jeff and Schultz last week caught a pass for a touchdown, had four receptions against Eastern Kentucky, and one was for 55 yards and a touchdown. He just found a seam in that zone across the middle, and Cottrell hit him on the button. He did bobble it, but held on. So a major third down conversion for Western Carolina here in the opening series of the game. We've got 13.30 to go. 
as they hand off to the tailback. That's Carlton Terry, and Terry gets over the 40, out to about the 41-yard line before the Bear defense is able to put him down. Defensively for Lenore Ryan, uh, Charlie Wallace, one of the primary tacklers in on the play, as the last one off of the pile is uh, number 40, Toby Bratton. So it'll be second down at about six for the Catamounts at the 41. Jeff, uh, defensive coordinator Jeff Farrington said one of the indicators for importance for the Bears on defense, the front line and how well they play, we're going to talk about number 76, Mike Cohe. He had a broken foot a couple of weeks ago. Wasn't supposed to play tonight, but he's in there. Second and six, only one running back. As a little short drop, and the pass is going to be caught by Henderson. Henderson to the 50-yard line, crossing to the Lenore Line 49. And another Western Carolina first down as the Catamounts uh, through the air are moving the ball, but not having a whole lot of success running the ball, Tom. Mike Ogles, we made a one-on-one -on -one tackle out in the open field. Did a good job keeping that from springing to the sideline. So across the 50 for the first time tonight are the Catamounts at the Bear 49-yard line. 12 and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. No score here from Windmire Stadium in Cullowee. Cottrell will drop uh, back and hand it off in a big hole this time for the first big game of the night running the ball. Carlton Terry inside the 40 and a first down run to the 35-yard line. That time the Catamount offensive line did the job that they'd failed to do so far in the ball game. Two years ago, Western Carolina played Mars Hill, I believe, and beat them 48 to nothing. And one of the key plays is an isolation. Halfback follows the fullback right up the middle. They block on the linebackers. That was that play, and it worked. Johnny Parton, Dolly Parton's cousin in at fullback, as Terry still in at tailback for the Catamounts. Three receivers for the purple and gold Catamounts, and they're going to give it to uh, Parton, his first carry of the night. He's uh, to about the 33-yard line for a short gain on the play. It'll bring up second and long for Western Carolina now in Lenore Ryan territory. He doesn't look like his cousin. Not from up here, he doesn't anyway. I wonder if he can sing. Well, we'll, that's what you're talking about, Gigi. We'll <laughs> find out a little bit later, perhaps. 11 and a half minutes to go in the first quarter. No score, but Western Carolina with an early threat. Here's the pitch back to Terry. Trying to get wide to the right. The Bears string him out, do a good job, and he's going to be tackled at about the 30 one yard line a fine defensive play terry so far five carries 22 yards in the ball game the bears on defense not particularly deep they're going to go with the same guys a lot this is not a good sign they wanted to keep Western off the field on offense, but they're starting to take up a lot of time, Jeff, going on five minutes. Now Western will take a timeout. No score, 10.48 to go at the first quarter. Western Carolina looking at third and six at their own, or at the Lenore Ryan 31 yard line. Only one setback behind Cottrell, and that is the tailback, Carlton Terry. On a long count, he's got four receivers, the Bears, in man-for-man -man coverage, and it's gonna be a quarterback draw. First down, more inside the 20, down to the 18 yard line. Everybody in the ballpark, including the Bears, wasn't looking for that, and it's a first down game for for uh, Western Carolina. Well, Jeff, right here's where Lenore Ryan's defense got tough last year throughout the season. Get inside the 20, get close in TD. They led the sack eight in uh, turnovers, causing 26. That's so the fourth, fourth first down for Western Carolina. In this drive, they took the opening kickoff and marched from their own 20 just now inside the 20-yard line of Lenore Ryan. Cottrell on first down with another long count. He's going to give to Terry. Terry weaving his way down to about the 15-yard line. So it'll be a gain of about three, and it'll bring up second and seven for Western Carolina. Jeff, that last quarterback sneak, that had to be a planned call, wasn't it? The line of scrimmage. They spread the defense, and one of the linebackers for the Bears, nobody in the middle, and Cottrell, as an upperclassman should do, noticed it and took, took off. But right now on the ground, they're really attacking the Bears right up the middle at their nose guard, Scott Henry, and running that eye formation isolation play right up the middle. Terry now, 26 yards on six carries in this drive for Western Carolina. Cottrell with another long count. Something left. Is going to pitch it back. Here comes Terry trying to get to the corner. Has Parton leading the blocking for him, and they drag him out of bounds and up just at the 10-yard line. Going to be about a yard short of what they need for a first down. And, Tom, this will set up an interesting call on third and one at the Bear 10-yard line. Well, this is, what, this is where the Bears have got to cause something to happen right here. Ike Ogilvy did a fine job. Todd Hagler got caught inside his defensive end position that time and allowed him to get down to the sideline to get that yardage. 
the Bears have been able to stop them. Tom mentioned a lot of times inside the 20. Western's been attacking the corners here on third and short. Look for them to go right on the toss sweep, possibly. Only one wide receiver, two running backs out of the I formation now for Western Carolina on third and one from the Bear 10-yard line. Cottrell is going to go to Terry. He's got the first down as he squirms to about the five-yard line. And Western, with their fifth first down of the drive, will have first and goal to go at the Lador Rhine five-yard line, and they've had the ball now for going on six minutes since the opening kickoff. This is what Dale Strom would like to see out of his ball club, is ball control and yardage, and they're getting it on this possession. First and goal at the five-yard line. So the Bears have got to bow their neck now. Cottrell looking over the Bear defense. Here's Terry into the end zone, running to the left for the touchdown, and Lenore Ryan sees Western Carolina score on their first possession. 8.57 to go in the first quarter. It's an 80-yard drive for the Catamounts, and Terry's touchdown run is his ninth carry of the drive. He had 41 yards in the drive out of the 80 that Western Carolina 13 plays, using up just over six minutes of uh, the first quarter of action. As the Catamounts will send Clay Cox on to try the extra point, the holder is Anthony Bear and Brad Garris, the snapper. It's a good spot. The kick is on the way, and without the tee, it's good. The Catamounts have a 7 0 lead. Lenore Ryan. Still not as fast as you. Lenore Ryan will receive the kickoff, and the Bears, for the first time in the 1989 season, will have an opportunity to handle the football as Jimmy Six Eye from out of Charlotte, North Carolina, will be, or excuse me, from out of Asheville, North Carolina, will be doing the kicking off. And the Bears are ready to receive this uh, kickoff, their first chance at a possession. That's Scott Walker at the 10-yard line. Coming to the right, Scott's got a seam, 30, over to 35, and he's tripped down. And it'll be Lenorine's possession with good field position at about the 36-yard line. Juju set the Bears' offense for us. Okay, Jeff, at center tonight will be Steve Swope. He's a senior out of Rock Hill. Two guards this evening, 51 Melvin Truitt to 79 Wesley Pope. Two tackles, 78 Dave Benson. 71, Paul Policki, a walk-on, starting his first major college game. Tommy Laurendine at quarterback will set the rest for you in a minute. The Appalachian transfer takes his first snap here since he was in a Mountaineer uniform back in 1987. As he's going to give it to the tailback, Randolph Bowers, and Bowers uh, rumbles for a yard or two, perhaps to the 38-yard uh, line, as the Bears will be trying to establish something of a running game, Tom, against this Western Carolina defensive front, which was last in the Southern Conference in defense last year. Well, I, I'm, I'm looking for the run a couple of plays, but I'm also looking for Tommy Laurentine to come out throwing shortly, too. I don't think you can hold him under wraps too long. 8.25 to go in the... First quarter of play, Western Carolina with a 7-0 lead. They send Walker in motion to the left side, the wide side of the field. Lauren Dean, a little play action fake, wants to throw. Under pressure, throws it incomplete. Intended for Walter Greer, who had rolled out of the backfield. But I think Tommy had a little pressure on him that time and had to get rid of it instead of taking the sack. Derek Harrison, number 78 defensive tackle. Six foot two, 250 pound junior in there putting pressure on Tommy on that kind of a delayed draw, Jeff, with the... Uh, short pattern out to the right and again Tommy just had to throw it away well Western Carolina sitting in a four man front looks like a four four which could go to a wide tackle six gives you good coverage on the run during running situations and also on the pass gives you the extra corners in a passing situation Bears showing three receivers Jones and Walker to the bottom and uh if they go four four like that they are susceptible man to man coverage here yeah. or I should say Jones and Hatley to the bottom and Walker to the top. Here is uh, Lauren Dean. Scott Walker, he's at midfield, 40, still on his feet, fumbles the ball, it's loose, and who's got it at the 30, down at the 27-yard line? The Bears get a big play, and Walker with a big hit coughs it up, and Western Carolina recovers it on the fumble. That's not a good omen for the Bears, who... Wait a minute, wait a minute. Referee's already signaled Western Carolina's ball. Western Carolina's going to get possession, and Walker, slow to get up, really took a big hit. But I think we learned one thing on that play. The Bears are going to be able to throw the ball, Tom. Yeah, they caught. Uh, Juju was talking about being in a four-man front and be susceptible to man-to-man -to -man coverage back in the secondary. That particular time, they jumped into a five-man front and uh, left it wide open, deep middle. They had somebody behind him, but uh, there's a lot of space there in the middle zone. Bears had the ball for less than a minute. They only ran three plays. Walker's fumble gives it back to Western Carolina at the uh, Western 27-yard line. 
And the Catamounts have possession for the second time, leading 7-0 here midway in the first quarter. Todd Cottrell brings him up to the line of scrimmage, a pair of receivers, and this time they split the running backs behind him. And they're going to go to the tailback. This is Terry. He's to the 30, breaks a tackle 35 and out to the 37, almost a 10-yard run there. Could be close to first down yardage on the first play from scrimmage. Well, that's got to give Western Carolina a boost to see LR come up with a big gain only to fumble it right back to them. Two watchwords for the LR coaches were talking about, Jeff, on defense. They wanted to keep Western's offense off the field and not make any turnovers on offense to, I don't know, two things that happened last year that did not happen last year for the Bears. So far tonight, it hasn't gone that way. Terry, their bread and butter man with 51 yards on 10 carries, and this time they give the ball to... Parton, the helmet flies off as he gets over the 40 out to about the 45 yard line. A gain of about seven yards, maybe eight yards on the play. Western Carolina moving the ball very well on offense right now, picking up some good real estate carrying the ball. Loose football down, down there that time, Jeff, and the Bears thought they had it. But the official had blew the play dead, and Western Carolina keeps possession. It's second and two at the 45 yard line. Cottrell going to option it down the line. A terrible pitch. The ball is loose. Lenore Ryan is going to get it maybe at about the 30-yard yes. line. The Bears have it. Let's see who comes up off the bottom of the pile with the football. It is. It's Lenore Ryan. It's Lenore Ryan's ball, but it's Marcus Wall that comes up with the fumble recovery. And so back-to-back -back turnovers here, one by Lenore Ryan and one by Western Carolina, and the Bears have possession on a, just a flat-out terrible pitch, Tom. He just threw it back. There wasn't anybody back there to catch it. And they had more Lenore Ryan players around than they did Western Carolina. So the Bears have possession first down at the Western Carolina 30-yard line. Out of the I formation, they've got three receivers as... Uh, Lauren Dean motioning uh, the receivers to back up a little bit. They go to Bowers, and Randolph might have got a yard to the 29-yard line, not much more than that. Boy, super penetration by the Catamount front line. Again, it's Harrison, number 98, getting great penetration, and the Bears really want to run the football on first down. Jeff up the middle with Bowers, and let's see if Lenore Ryan will throw it now with not very much success so far. Market at the 28-yard line. Call it second down and eight yards to go. Six minutes and 20 seconds to go in the first quarter. Western with a 7-0 lead, and the Bears showing three receivers this time. Lauren Dean will back up, has protection, going over the middle, incomplete, going to be short hop down there. And it'll be an incomplete pass intended for uh, Kenny Jones, and he just couldn't catch it on the short hop. It'll be third down at the 28-yard uh, line. Kenny Jones last year as a freshman caught 30 passes for 485 yards and five touchdowns. He averaged about 16 yards a carry, and the Bears again come out in a passing set, Jeff. They've been attacking the middle. Let's see if they try to go to Scotty Walker. Lauren Dean one for three, throwing the ball so far as the Bears have a man in motion. They're going to go on the running play to Greer, and Walter struggles inside the 25 to about the 24-yard line. John Perry and his staff hoping they might catch Western Carolina looking for the pass that time, and it looks like the Bears are going to possibly elect to go for a field goal here. It'll be about 41 yards. As the Bears send the kicking team on and lining up to uh, try the field goal attempt is Jason Mundy. Mundy will have Joel Roop holding for him. It's almost straight away from the 31-yard line. Look the at the man in the middle for Western Carolina. There's the, snot, the spot. The kick is on the way. It isn't very pretty, but it's good. Lenore Ryan's on the board. 5.24 to go in the first quarter. Well, the first player for Lenore Ryan to score in the 1989 football season is a freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, as Monday hits a 41-yard field goal. And Jason will be doing the kicking off also. Or excuse me, that is Richie Mallard doing the kicking off for Lenore Ryan. A high kick, not that deep. Western will have it at the 11-yard line. Trying to make the return is Reggie Graves. Graves with some running room. And only the kicker is there to make the saving tackle. Got a flag on the 20. We do have a penalty flag down, and we may have this one brought back. But what a fine return by uh, 
Graves as Mallard was the only one that could save a touchdown, but we got a penalty flag back at the 21-yard line. It's going to go against Western Carolina. I don't know what it was. I didn't see anything down that particular area. I was watching. It may have been a clip. The only thing I could possibly think of. It's a big break for Lenore Ryan, Tom, because Western would have had field position at midfield, and now they're going to be backed up deep in their own territory. Jeff, an early observation here, just looking at some of the players you can see for the Bears on defense, and they've been out there quite a bit. They do look tired and look a little slow. That artificial turf is tough to play on, and Bears haven't played on artificial turf in about three years. Last time they played on it was at uh, West Virginia Tech. Tech. Got to keep Tech and State correct because this year we're playing West Virginia State. <laughs> Bears try to cover him, and on a long count, Cottrell going to give to. Parton the fullback and Parton with a good run comes over the 15 straight at the Baron defense maybe the 16 yard line where the heart of the bear front comes up with the tackle last one off of the pile was one of the defensive ends Ben Fouts where well, Western only had 90 yards rushing a week ago against Eastern Kentucky and they've really been attacking up the middle against Lenore Ryan and Scott Henry played defensive tackle for the Bears number 90 this year at nose tackle. Parton's got 13 yards on three carries as Western goes second and five from the 15 and here's the Terry the tailback cutting back nicely. I don't know if he's got the first down or not. He just got to the 20 yard line and the Bears spun him around and drop him a little bit short of what he needs for first down yardage and around the 19 yard line. So Western will be looking at third and short at their own 19 yard line. A little adjustment for Scott Henry at that nose tackle position playing tackle last year. All he had to worry about was that tackle and then tight, tight end coming down on him. This year he's got to worry about both guards coming down on him which side they're coming from. 4.15 to go in the first quarter. Western with a 7-3 lead and they're looking at third and one at their own 19 yard line. This is Terry. He's got the first down yardage as he wedges it over the 20 to perhaps the 21 yard line. They may call for a measurement here, but it looks like from where the official is spotting the ball that Terry will have enough yardage for the first down. And Terry's off to an excellent start with 350 to go here in the first quarter. Lenore Ryan trailing 7 to 3. Terry's got 12 carries, 57 yards, 56 yards, and is off to a, an awfully fine start. The officials do want to measure it, Tom, so we've got our first measurement of the 1989 season as they'll drag the chains out on Bob Waters Field. And it's a Western first down by about the length of the football. Not by much, but they've got a first down. I'll tell you who's off to playing a pretty good game on defense for the men in white, as you see, number 30, Charlie Wallace, has been on a number of tackles. And again, those 11 guys have played the entire first quarter, just almost the entire defense on the field. Western does have a good streak going. They're four for four in third down conversion so far in this ball game. 3.30 to go in the first quarter. The Catamounts lead seven to three, and they're gonna pitch it back to Terry. And here's student body right. Terry over the 25, out to about the 27, 28 yard line before the Bear defense is there to finally drop it. One of their tendencies so far is a run away from the, the strong side of the Bear defense. That is the side that number nine is on, Todd Hegler. And they are attacking Ben Fouts, number 84, and some of those big linemen getting out on blocks. And that's one of the reasons that they're able to get on the corner and pick up good yardage on first down. They've had 17 running plays, and Terry's carried the ball 13 times so far here in the first quarter for the Catabouts. Here is Terry again. This time he's got the first down and a little bit more as he gets over the 30-yard line before Marcus Wall tackles him at the 33-yard line and another Western Carolina first down. And again, on the strong side, that's the side where the tight end is located, and they're blocking down on number 84, Ben Fouts, kicking him out, and they're in the secondary, and the Bear defensive backs right now are playing a big role, having come up and support the run early on. Tom, this Lenorine defense has been on the field a lot here in the first quarter as they see Western now go first down at the 33-yard line. They flip-flop and now drop back in the I formation as uh, they're going to give to carry. The ball pops loose and goes out of bounds. Western will keep possession. They actually gain yardage on the fumble out to about the 40-yard line as the Catamounts will still have possession of the football. To give you some idea of what Faust is up against the, against the play before this, he got trapped by a 6'1", 274-pound freshman. That's pretty good size freshman. A couple of new faces along that Lenore Ryan coaching staff on the sidelines. The man that just caught the footballs that rolled out of bounds, Greg Revis, a Lenore Ryan grad in 1983, Pat Apke, 
Funny thing is, Jeff, the two coordinators for the Bears offense and defense are both up in the booth tonight instead of on the field. Second and seven for the Catamounts at the 43-yard line. Cottrell is going to give it on the running play, and Parton gets over the 40 out to about the 41-yard line, and they're going to be looking at uh, third and short once again for Western Carolina. We're down to two minutes right now to go in the first quarter. The Catamounts have a 7-3 to three lead. It's strange, is it not? Defensive coordinator Jeff Farrington and offensive coordinator Charlie Fisher both upstairs, not on the sideline. Well, that's a new wrinkle from last year, isn't it? It certainly is. Yeah. Third and two at the 41-yard line. They flip-flop the tight end. And now out of the eye formation with a pair of uh, wide receivers. Cottrell is going to pitch it back to guess who? Mr. Terry makes a nice cut. we got a holding call coming up against Western as Terry breaks it into the clear, and he's going to go for a score, but they'll bring this one back. Terry with a beautiful run, but it's going to go all for naught. Western going to be caught for holding back at the line of scrimmage. It took them two plays to find out that they had a freshman on, on the defensive end position. The lower line put in Tracy Coulter. It was at the right defensive end position on that play, and they came his way immediately. Tracy number 45 out of Newton Conover, giving Ben Fouts a rest, and they were attacking Ben, and again, they're going at the weak side of that Lenore Ryan defense away from number nine, Todd Hegler. What a beautiful run by Carlton Terry, however, only to have it wiped out by the holding call, and what a big break for Lenore Ryan to keep Western off the board once again. You took your glasses off, Tom. How did you see that? I can see if it's four miles away. I just can't see if it's on the end of my nose. <laughs> <laughs> well, the penalty against uh, Western Carolina will be assessed, and the ball will be moved back to the 31-yard line where it'll bring up third down and about 12 yards to go. Second penalty for 20 yards against Western Carolina, and it couldn't have come at a better time for Lenora Ryan or a worse time for Western. And these are the mistakes that they had a week ago against Eastern Kentucky, Jeff. Some of the same things. The Bears took advantage of a turnover early for a field goal. Passing situation, perhaps, as Cottrell with a pair of receivers out of the I formation on third down and 12 yards to go, wants to throw. Rolling right, looking, may elect to run it. Is going to throw short. It's going to be Ooh. incomplete, almost intercepted by Lenore Ryan. I believe that was Ike Oglesby. Or no, I believe it was uh, Charlie Wallace. Charlie Wallace that almost had his hands on it. It will be uh, fourth down, and Western's going to have to punt it away. Get the feeling that the Bears need to make Western pass the football. They've run the ball almost at will so far here in the first uh, quarter. Anthony Bear goes back to do the kicking, and Lenore Ryan has a single deep man, Scott Walker, back to receive the punt, standing at about his own 30-yard line. And how many punts have Lenore Ryan blocked the last couple of years? Line of scrimmage is the 31, and the Bears almost get Bear, and they're going to get a penalty for roughing the kicker. And Western gets a break. We'll get to keep possession of the football out of that. I don't think that was intentional contact, but he just sort of ran into him, Tom. Well, I think a uh, punter, they have to be half punter and half actor. He stuck his foot out there and got it bumped, and, of course, he did his job. He fell. He had uh, stage acting 101 at that time. A, he's we a communication a, uh, major, yes, I bet he you. Is. We have a Southern Conference officiating crew here tonight. That's about the only comment I'm going to make about the officials. And their names are? Well, they might want to remain nameless, but it is fourth down on the penalty, and uh, Western will get a first down out of it because of the roughing the kicker call. Is that an automatic first down, or they just bring a five-yard penalty? It'll be a 15-yard penalty, 15 and they'll yards. have the first down. Steve Landis is the referee. Butch Hanna, the umpire. Claude... Saunders, the linesman, Al Swan, the line judge, John Lane, the field judge. The back judge is Frank Overcash and Ken O'Connor, the clock operator. And Juju, you're right. It is, they're going to rule it an unintentional contact, and that would be a five yard, five -yard penalty. penalty. Still fourth down. You told me to read the rule book driving up here this afternoon. So Western will have to punt it again, and the Bears may have gotten a break. Bear will be ready to punt, standing back inside his own 25-yard line. Lenore now peeling a couple of other people's back, but Walker standing at about his own 20-yard line. Lenore setting up a return, kind of a low-line driver that Walker's going to let bounce on the turf and just run away from it, and Western's going to pin the Bears back inside the 10-yard line. 
Lenore Ryan will have possession with less than a minute to go in the first quarter, starting at uh, their own nine-yard line when they take over. You couldn't ask for much of a better punt out of uh, Bear under those conditions. That's uh, about a 50 two-yard punt out of the uh, young man. Lesson number one in trying to field punts on the artificial turf, you almost all the time have to pick them up because they're going to get that extra roll. Yeah, that was kind of hard to field. It was a low-line drive kick. He was playing about medium depth. It's just hard to come up and catch up and on the fly, but uh, you still need to try to pick it up and run with it. So with 54 seconds to go in the first quarter, Lenorine trailing 7-3, to three, starts at their own nine-yard line. Lauren Dean going to give it straight ahead to Greer. Waller gets over the 10 to the 11-yard line, and the Bears have not been able to run with much success here in the first quarter at Whitmire Stadium tonight. And Western has had the uh, Bear offense on the sidelines for most of the first quarter. Uh, their offensive unit, Western Carolina's offensive unit, has been on there for over 10 minutes here in the first quarter as we're in the closing seconds, probably the last play of the first quarter coming up here. As we're down to 24 seconds, as we get ready to snap this one, Larndine fumbles the snap, picks it up, gives it, and here's a big hole for Sam Wells. Wells in at the tailback slot, gets over the 25, and the Bears have a first down run hearing the closing seconds of the first quarter tonight. Mark it at the 28-yard line in the first first down rushing for Lenore Ryan here in the ballgame. What a good run by Wells that time. He was a wide receiver last year, was he not, Tom? And had a good game late in the season against Mars Hill, I believe, had over 100 yards rushing. Yeah. The thing about that snap, when uh, Lauren Dean dropped the snap, it froze the linebackers for Western Carolina. They just had to sit there and wait and see where the play developed. That's the end of the first quarter with the score. Western Carolina 7, Lenore Ryan 3. You're listening to Lenore Ryan Football 89 on Catawba Valley Cable TV. I just feel $80 is a lot to pay for sneakers. That's what tennis shoes cost these days. Yeah, Dad, Joey got some that cost $100. Wait, I didn't even get those. Well, how can one record cost $15? It's not a record, Dad. It's a CD. A what? <laughs> Who wants dessert? Me. What else can I get you, folks? Let's see. Now, there's something I can feel good about. I'll get this one, guys. It's feel good time at Western Steel. If your car stereo dealer thinks this <laughs> is a woofer, get some sound thinking from your authorized Pioneer dealer. Like Pioneer's DEH 55 high-powered compact disc player with AM FM tuner. Available now at tremendous savings. So see your Pioneer dealer today. Because when it comes to buying a car stereo, it's dog eat dog out there. Hello, I'm Tom Watson, your host for the sixth season of Catawba Valley Sports Roundup here on Catawba Valley Cable TV. Join us each week for the best football coverage in the Catawba Valley area. We'll talk with the coaches about their Friday night contest and about upcoming games. There will also be exclusive highlights of your favorite team on our game of the week. We'll also check in with head coach John Perry of the Lenore Ryan Bears on Lenore Ryan lineup. So join me every Saturday morning at 11 or Monday evening at 6 for Catawba Valley Sports Roundup, only on Cable Channel 3. Turner Network Television, the new channel on cable TV with all kinds of good stuff. TNT, bringing back thousands of classic movies, more than 250 every month. TNT, the exclusive home of Muppets, Fraggles, Gorgs, and Doozers. TNT, new original motion pictures, movies you can't see anywhere else. The good stuff's on TNT. If you can't find the new TNT channel, consult your listings or check with your cable operator. I'm Jeff Joins along with Tom Watson and Juju Phillips, your Lenorine broadcasting crew for the 1989 season as we have the second quarter about to get underway. And Tom, Western had the offensive uh, team on the field for the better part of the first quarter. Lenorine's going to have to generate a little more offense here in the second quarter. You know, just before the first quarter ended, uh, they had the uh, long touchdown run call back on a penalty. I noticed several Lenorine players signals with the bench that they needed a breather. They've been out there all the first quarter. So the offense gets a fresh start here in the second quarter as Tommy Laurentino will bring him up to the line of scrimmage as the Bears have a first down to work with at their own 28-yard line following a punt that had them backed up to their own nine-yard line. Laurentino wants to throw, looking in and out of the hands of his intended receiver, Bowers, who had circled out of the backfield, and it's incomplete. The Bears have not had a lot of luck throwing the ball. They had the great catch and run by Walker only to see him fumble it in the uh, first quarter. Now there's one that Bowers could have had, but just couldn't hold on to. 
Their offense looked a little out of sync, Jeff. You're mentioning the passing attack, which is they have a lot of different plays and a lot of different sets, especially that short control passing attack, and Randolph just dropped the football that time after the play action pass. Second and 10 at the 28-yard line. Three receivers this time for the Bears out of the I formation. Uh oh, one of the offensive tackles for Lenore Ryan got a little uh, quick start that time. It was Greg Autry, a sophomore, that moved on the play for Lenore Ryan. The left tackle and the uh, penalty is going to cost the Bears five yards. Lenore Ryan, one pass completion in the first quarter for 35 yards. That's the one that Walker caught and then fumbled it after a fine run after catching the ball and that's the only completion they've had so far in the football game. Western over 100 yards rushing in the first quarter on 20 carries. The Bears with 62 yards in total offense while Western had 128 in the first quarter. So that that's indicative of uh, the time of possession as well as Western had the ball for over 10 of the 15 minutes in the first quarter. Here's second and 15 now, back at the 23. Lauren Dean wanting to throw. Tommy may scramble, throws instead, and it's going to be caught, making the receptions. Kenny Jones, as he had to reach behind him to catch it, he's dropped after a short gain at the 30-yard line. The most important position on the offensive line, at least from the quarterback standpoint, is that left offensive tackle from the blind side if you're a right-handed quarterback. And you had mentioned Autry is over there filling in for Steve Davidson who has some knee problems will miss the early part of the season. Autry's got to block that defensive end. The last couple of plays he has not, Jeff, and that has forced Lauren Dean to get rid of the football early. Lauren Dean comes under Steve Swope, the offensive center, and will get ready to throw once again. Going deep over the middle, incomplete, intended for Jones once again at the 45, and the Bear punting unit will come on as uh, it'll be fourth and long for Lenore Ryan. Tom, it looks like Tommy's football is not, when he's throwing the ball, looks like it's going down the nose of the football. Yes, nosing down. I think he could have slipped that one between the two defensive backs and got that to Jones on the fly if he had really rifled it through. Juju, you're talking about him. I'll go ahead and turn it back over to you, Jeff. Get this punt off. Richie Ballard will do the punting. Western with three people back off of the line waiting on the kick, and Mallard hits it. End over end job. Going to bounce at about the 40 and go out of bounds in the vicinity of the Western 35. There'll be no return. But the, just to show you how things are going, Western Carolina kicks a line drive while ago, not a particularly good punt, and it rolls for 30 yards. Nor Ryan shanks one, and it rolls for two yards. 35 yards on the punt, and it'll be Western's possession at their own 35 as they have their first possession of the second quarter, starting at 14.08 to go, and they have a 7-3 lead. The Catamounts drove 80 yards on their first possession, 13 plays, and Terry's five-yard touchdown run gave them a 6-0 lead. Cox added the extra point to make it 7-0 on a 6-minute, 13-play drive. Only one running back now behind the quarterback, Cottrell, as they send Parton back in motion. This is Terry struggling for perhaps a couple of yards to about the 37-yard line. And maybe the Bear defense has been able to make some adjustments here because Western, after the first two possessions, has not run the ball quite as well. Juju was talking that the Bear offense looked a little bit out of sync. That could be the difference between Lenore and having their first game and Western Carolina being their second game. Uh, it'd be nice. I know Coach John Perry would like for the offense to be in sync this second quarter, and certainly by the second half. The way Western's moving the ball the first quarter, can't afford to have otherwise. We've got an official timeout with 13.37 to go in the first half. Western leading Lenorine 7-3. Lenorine Football 89 will continue on Catawba Valley Cable TV. <laughs> Second down, nine yards to go for the Catamounts. There's eight yards to go at the 37-yard line. Out of the I formation, Cottrell. Will want to roll and throw. Setting up down the middle, wide open, and a catch. Fumble. And the ball's loose, and the Bears have recovered. At the 48-yard line of Lenore Ryan. Who's got the football? Ben Fouts. It's Ben Fouts, and the guy that had the catch and then dropped it for Western Carolina was Raymond Taylor, the tight end. And what a hit the Bears put on him before Bounce reco Fouts recovered the fumble. Second turnover by Western Carolina as Lenore Ryan takes over at the 48-yard line. Couldn't catch it, Jeff. I thought... It was Terrence Mungro, the strong safety for the Bears, making that hit across the middle. And that's the second time tonight that a player dropped the football after being hit, catching a pass in the middle. LR at the Bear 48-yard line. We got 13-27 to go in the first half, and it's a 7-3 Catamount lead. Single coverage over on the right on Scotty Walker. Lauren Dean will give to Bowers. Randolph with a head of steam and all of a sudden dropped. A flag flies on the play as it comes to a conclusion at the 49-yard line of Lenora Ryan. And we'll let the officials move in and sort out the penalty. 
And they're talking with Tommy Larndy. We have a penalty against Western Carolina. Holding. Oh, no, it's against the Bears. It looked like it came from that side judge, I guess his name, against wide receiver Kenny Jones, number six, on the crackback block that time, it appeared. Well, they'll mark it from the point of the infraction at the 39, or excuse me, the 49, and move it back to the 39-yard line, so it'll be a 10-yard penalty, and the Bears will be looking at a 20-yard uh, situation, first and 20 to go. John Perry down along the sidelines, shuttling in the players, Jody Hatley, and here comes Sam Wells in. They'll go out for Scott Walker and Randolph Bauer. So the Bears, again, making a lot of changes, a lot of player changes on offense to see if they can get something going, and again, a long situation. Third bear penalty for 20 yards. Frank Huffman, our statistician, the best in the business, tells us. As the Bears go first and 20 at their own 39, and Lauren Dean with a little play action wanting to throw. Pumps, throws it right into the ground, intended for uh, Kevin Gilmore, and it uh, is incomplete, and the Bears will be looking at third down. Lauren Dean, two of seven in the passing department, 41 yards. Jeff, it looks like from up here that Tommy's still having a problem throwing the football. I don't know if he has some type of injury, but most of his balls have not really... Not got there. Yeah, you know, besides that, too, it, it, they've appeared as if he's been throwing them into the ground. Maybe he's not getting a good grip on the ball. I think I said third down. I beg your, beg your pardon. It is second down, second and 20 from the 39-yard line. They split the running backs, a pair of receivers this time, and another passing situation. Larndine loops it to Wells. Sam's got a seam. He's at the 45 and back almost to the original line of scrimmage at around the 47-yard line. So Tom will be looking at third and long for the Bears, still in their own territory. Yeah, Juju was talking about throwing the ball on the ground. Last time I saw that, I saw Terry Bradshaw, Pittsburgh Steeler quarterback. Juju's familiar with him. He threw 10 in a row, nose down into the dirt in an NFL game. So even the guys that make a million dollars a year do it. And, and go into the Hall of Fame. You're right. And Juju, I hear that Bradshaw's still looking for Mike Webster. Yeah, he wants to. Yeah, I don't want to say what he said, but yeah. <laughs> Terry's speech into the Hall of Fame this year. One final wish to put his hands on Mike Webster's butt one more time. Of course, Webster, the center for those world champion Steelers for a number of years. Third and 11, deep over the middle. Going to be caught by Walker. He's got first down yardage at Moore inside the 25 to the 21-yard line. And the Bear offense finally collects with the big play. Tremendous catch and run. Tremendous. And for Scotty Walker, Jeff, that similar play across the middle, he was open longer than 7-11. Second catch for Walker. This time he held on to it, Tom, and the Bears are in business at the 21. I just heard Juju. Now I know one of the concerns about doing this for cable TV. <laughs> <laughs> I can't cut him off. 11.57 <laughs> to go in the first half. Lenore Ryan threatening uh, with a first down at the Western Carolina 21-yard line. Out of the I formation, they got two receivers to the wide side. Greer with a good hole in the middle, gets inside the 15. Good blocking with the Bear offensive front. That's Melvin Truitt and Paul Palicki down there doing the blocking, and the Bears have it down to the 13-yard line. And it was Dave Benson, the tackle, with coming down on the linebacker and a good inside trap by Greer, and that's one of the Bear key plays inside is Greer on the quick trap and got a big gain that time. It's going to be second down and short yardage. One of the few times tonight the Bears have had second and short time. They've been only averaging three yards a, a gain on first down all night long. Here's second and two at the 12-yard line. Lauren Dean out of the eye. We'll give it to Bowers. Randolph cuts outside. He's to the five, down to the two, out of bounds at the one-yard line. Let me check that. It's Wells, 28, running the ball. Sam Wells, but it's still first and goal to go for the Bears at the eight-yard line. And the Western Carolina defense that was last in the Southern Conference last year now beginning to show some signs of their inability to stop people. Second and two is Coach's dream. And now it's first and goal to go from the one-yard line. Good move by Wells. He dipped inside and threw his shoulder and went outside and went to the corner almost into the end zone. Bowers and Greer behind Laurendine on first and goal from the one-yard line. Tommy looking over the defense with a long count. We'll try to sneak it. I don't know. He got it. He is He's not in the end zone. No signal from the official. They spot it about two inches away from the goal line. Tommy's entire body's in the end zone. But the ball didn't go. Tommy's second and goal. Look at that spot, would you? It's only two inches away from the goal line. A nipple. The distance from the end of the ball to the white stripe is what separates Lenore Ryan from a touchdown right now. It's the tip of the football. That's what it's called. 
Ten and a half minutes to go in the first half. Lauren Dean will give to Bowers. Touchdown, Lenore Rye. You'll put it down as a one-yard run in the, in the book, but, Tom, it was about two inches, and it's worth six points. And he went, over, went, went by air. Frequent flyer. So the Bears take the lead. It's 9-7, to 10-31 to go in the first half here at Cullowee, North Carolina, on Bob Waters Field, E.J. Whitmire Stadium. Taking over at midfield and coming back from a, a penalty. Six plays, 52 yards. The freshman out of Stone Mountain, Georgia, Jason Mundy, will attempt the extra point. Joel Roop will do the holding. It's a good spot. The kick's on the way, and it's perfect. Lenore Ryan 10, Western Carolina 7. Well, with 10 minutes and 31 seconds to go in the first half, Lenore Ryan has taken a 10 to 7 lead over the Catamounts of Western Carolina, as Richie Mallard will do the kicking off for the Bears. And the Catamounts have a couple of deep people down there. That's Ricky Garden and Reggie Graves, and it's a high kick. Not that deep, going to be fielded at the 12-yard line, making the return. Up to the 30, shakes a tackle there and gets a good yardage a little bit more out to about the 35-yard line. The Catamounts will have first and 10 at their own 35-yard line. As that was Aaron Rob Roseboro, I want to correct myself, that ran the kickoff back for Western Carolina that time. Lenore Ryan, six plays, 52 yards. It took just under three minutes to move that scoring drive as now the Catamounts will try to counter Lenore Ryan's touchdown. First down at the 34-yard line. See if they go with the run up the middle. They've been successful running the ball for most of the first half. And they're going to go with the fullback, Parton. And Parton might have got a yard or two out to about the 36-yard line. Jeff, I'm anxious to find out from the LR coaches type of adjustments they made because Western has virtually not been able to move the football since that first drive. Boy, that defense must have a lot of confidence now, Tom. Well, I'm still waiting for Western to go back out to the ends like they did in the first quarter. They've been busting off guard and off tackle. Parton with five carries, 19 yards out of that fullback slot. It's and he, second and long now for Western at the 37-yard line. See if they go short side, away from the Hagler. They're going to pitch it back to the tailback. He's to the 40, breaks a little bit over the 40, out to about the 43-yard uh, line. That's Terry Carlton, the junior, has for, uh, not quite first down yardage. It's going to bring up third and short for the Catamounts, third and about a yard. Jeff, uh, the Faust kid, number 84, did a tremendous job on the defensive end that time, taking down the interferences that came that way. He took his blocker and plugged up the hole, but they didn't feel inside. They've been running. Watch the fans that will be watching in on the football telecast, number 84 for Western Carolina, the side that he goes on, many of the time the side that the uh, Catamounts run at. Third and a yard, and it's a quarterback keeper for Cottrell, and the quarterback squirms it over the 40, uh, right to the 45-yard line, and it will be enough for a Western Carolina first down. As we're down to nine minutes to go in the first half, Lenore Ryan with a 10 to seven lead. Each team have had turnover problems. The Bears have been able to move the ball when they've been able to hold on to it. That last drive by Lenore Ryan, give a lot of credit to that offensive line. They gave Lauren Dean an awful lot of credit and were able to spring a couple of long runs, one by Wells, one by Greer, and that was just a good balanced drive, a good mix of run and pass. Market at the 44, it is still a first down for the Catamounts as Cottrell wants to throw. Deep down the middle, going to overthrow his intended receiver, Andy Schultz, who had the defenders beat. And it's an incomplete pass. It'll be second and 10 for the Catamount. Schultz caught a pass last week, a 55 yard pass from Cottrell against Eastern Kentucky. Great protection from that Catamount front line, but the Bears had pretty good coverage in the secondary on the long post. Ball was thrown about 45 yards, Juju. You could have ran under that one. <laughs> 10, 10 yards further than the receiver was. <laughs> Second and 10 for the Catamounts. This time they'll split the running backs. They still have a couple of wide receivers as Tuttrell comes under center at the 44. And he wants to throw. Deep, 